currently the only real option to get income from your Berkshire investment is to sell a share or two of the stock. Is there a point in the future where Berkshire shareholders may expect a dividend payment, or what conditions would be needed for Berkshire to consider paying a dividend? Yeah, we will pay dividend. And, and matter of fact, there may be an argument that when we pay dividends, we should pay out almost 100 percent, because it does mean that we are lost the ability to find ways to invest a dollar uh, in a manner that creates more than a dollar of present value uh, for the shareholders. But uh, let's assume you had a savings account, and the savings account uh, paid 5%, uh, and you had your choice of taking $50 a year out or letting the $50 stay in, and somebody would pay you 120% of that savings account any time you wanted to sell a piece of it. Now, would you want to take the $5 out, or would you rather let it accumulate and have the ability to sell at 120 cents on the dollar, uh, that account? Every dollar that's been reinvested uh, in Berkshire has created more than a dollar of market value. So it's much more intelligent if you control the dividend policy of, of, of Berkshire. It's much more intelligent for people to leave the dollar in, have it valued at $1.20 or $1.30 or whatever it may be valued, and then sell off a little piece if they want the income or if they want to receive some cash. And the logic of it, I think, is, is, is unquestionable. The execution of it is, is a problem. I mean, the question of whether we can keep investing dollars to create more than a dollar of, 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 of present market value, uh, you know, the, there's an end to that at some point. But so far, people, by leaving uh, $160 billion at the end of the third quarter in the, in, the, in the business, have $200 billion that they can cash out for it any time they wish. So it, there will come a time, and uh, you know, who knows how soon, because the numbers are getting big, there will come a time when we do not think we can lay out a you know, 15 or 20 billion a year and get something that's immediately worth more than that for our shareholders. And like I say, when the time comes uh, where a, a dollar is only buying us 90 cents uh, of value, uh, we'll quit spending the dollar. We'll give it to the shareholders. But I, I predict that the day that Berkshire de declares a dividend, the stock will go down. I mean, it will, and it should go down because it's an admission, essentially, that uh, a compounding machine has lost its ability to uh, to continue continue on that course. Charlie. Well, and there's nothing wrong with selling a little Berkshire stock to buy jewelry if you're in the right place. I would like to announce that my niece Cynthia visited Borsheim's yesterday around, I guess, around 3 o'clock, and uh, she was there with her, her boyfriend, and he proposed, and they bought a ring. And congratulations. Her mother did the same thing a few years ago. Uh, uh, and, you know, these things can become family traditions. Uh, so go out there, and who knows what will happen. <laughs> Berkshire Hathaway has had large investments in Wells Fargo and U.S. Bank. What are the revenue outlooks and business prospects for these two banks? Wells Fargo and U.S. Bancorp are both among the best uh, large banks, if not the best, uh, in the country. And they, they're different than uh, what you think of in terms of some money center banks, but they're very large. Wells is four times as large as USB. Banking as a whole, U.S. banking, profitability will be considerably less, in my view, uh, in the period ahead than it was, say, in the early part of this century. And one, and the a very important reason is that the leverage will be reduced. Uh, and that's probably a good thing for society. It's, it may be a bad thing for individual banks that could use leverage intelligently, but 
The trouble was that they all thought they could use leverage intelligently, and the actions of one or more that were unintelligent about it uh, you know, had consequences for everybody, uh, which you can see if you view HBO on whatever it is. Is it May 26th then? <laughs> the, uh, uh, so I would say that return on assets, even if return on assets were as good as it was some years ago, there will be less assets per dollar of common equity than before, which means return on common equity will be less. Uh, we still think that Wells Fargo and U.S. Bank are very good uh, operations. We think they're very decent businesses. They're not as attractive as when leverage ratios could be higher. In terms of the troubles in banking, I, uh, uh, the, I think you've seen by far the worst in the past, and, and, and loan losses have been trending downward now for several quarters. And I think the expectation is that will continue. And I think banking is a very fundamental business. But as John Stump said a few years ago at Wells Fargo, he said, I don't know why we keep thinking of new ways to lose money when the old ones were working so well. You know, <laughs> uh, And banks, banks periodically go crazy. It, it's always on the asset side. I mean, here you've got cheap money. You've got the, you know, you've got, you've got the federal government behind, although the federal government has never had to pay out anything on, uh, in terms of the FDIC. The FDIC has handled 3,800 since it was established in January 1st, 1934. The FDIC has paid out uh, probably 3,800, 3,900 by now institutions, uh, 250 of them or so in the last couple of years. And that has not cost the U.S. taxpayer a penny. I mean, that has all come from FDIC assessments on other banks. It's been a mutual insurance company. Uh, so the banking, if you, keep, if you just keep out of trouble on the asset side, is a very good business because you get your money so cheap. And, uh, you know, because of the implicit uh, federal guarantee, and uh, you do get to leverage up to a fair extent, and America's been a pretty good place to lend money. So I like our positions in there. You will see that if you looked at those totals, you'll we see we have, we've added to Wells Fargo, and, and uh, uh, I think they're, both those companies are very well-run institutions, but they will not be able to earn, I don't know what the figures were, but I think they were up in 25 or to 30 percent on tangible equity, and uh, that's not going to get repeated in the future, and it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Charlie? Well, yeah, we... <laughs> We might add that M&T Bank, which most oh, yeah. people never talk about, is headed by a really sensible fellow. And uh, it's been a wonderful investment for us. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you'll get the M&T annual report, uh, it's written by Bob Wilmers, the, the letter. The first part of it's about M&T specifically, but the second part is about uh, particularly the American financial economy. And I would really recommend you read that. Bob is a very smart guy, and he has a lot of good observations. And, and frankly, the other one I'd recommend you read is Jamie Dimon's letter, uh, J.B. Morgan, is, is, uh, is a tour de force in terms of uh, uh, describing the banking scene, the economic scene. He has some real insights in there about some very important subjects. We don't own that stock, but it's a, uh, it's a letter that, that I think everybody could learn a lot from reading, as they could from reading uh, Bob Wilmer's letter at, at M&T. Yeah, and those people who like uh, an element of morality and business, uh, <laughs> Wilmer sounds like an Old Testament prophet. I mean, he really doesn't like it that all the really big banks are making so much money out of trading because he says, you're really trying to outsmart your own customers, and he'd rather serve them in a culture of uh, deserve trust in both directions. It's hard to think he's totally wrong. He also expresses a, quite a dislike for the fact that a market system creates uh, a reward system where money sort of disproportionately 
flows to people who work with money and that that tends to attract uh, a disproportionate number of people that uh, of lots of ability that he thinks might be at least some of them might be better deployed elsewhere. It's an interesting read. It's one of the best annual reports that's ever come out of banking, right out of Buffalo. 